Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, uh, I, as your self-proclaimed velocity banking cult leader, am going to talk about daily rituals, right? So what is the daily ritual that will set you financially free? That's going to be just doing Excel sheets over and over and over again with your budget and your line of credit and making it your main operating account. In fact, you might even do it more than once a day. It could be twice a day, but just make it a daily ritual, right? And that's how you'll be able to master this thing called velocity banking. Now, before we get started, I just want to point out that a lot of people have been digging these velocity banking cult videos, right? I just, you know, I'm amazed that 447 people watched it, and then I got three additional subscribers, and look at the watch time. 61.2 hours? Isn't that, like, almost more than two days of people watching it? <laughs> you know, like, and it's just another Velocity Banking cult video, because I, as your self-proclaimed cult leader, and here's the thing, I'm not really a cult leader, right? I'm like O.J. Simpson. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later in the video. If I were a cult leader... This is what I would say your d daily ritual would be, you know? You ever, like, play with ChatGPT and then just kind of, like, think about, like, you know, certain situations about, like, describe velocity banking in a tone of a cult leader's voice? Let's go ahead and do that before we get started. Can you um, simply summarize velocity banking in the tone of a charismatic cult leader's voice? Let's go ahead and make sure that this is spelled correctly. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and read it. Velocity banking is the path to financial freedom the ultimate strategy that the banks don't want you to know about. Imagine paying off your mortgage years ahead of time, slashing that interest like a knife through butter. We harness the power of HELOCs, yes, the same ones the banks profit from, and we turn it around to work for us. This isn't just a method, it's a movement. With this technique, you use your income and a revolving line of credit to obliterate debt, stacking interest payments in your favor. They've tried to keep us in the dark, but no more. You will seize control of your financial destiny, crush your debts, and rise to financial independence faster than anyone thought possible. And once you've mastered this, you'll see the truth. The system is there to be bent, to be broken, for those who understand the game. Join us and break free. Yes, in the, in the voice and tone of the charismatic cult leader, go ahead and join us and break free. Now, if you want to go a little bit creepy and weird, right? I would probably just, um, you know, you could, it's funny because like I've done this with like different like TV characters. So you remember like Apocalypse from the X Men? Like I did this with like Apocalypse from the X Men because honestly, like that guy's like a you know end of the world cult leader in my opinion, in the tone of. Uh, Apocalypse's voice from X-Men. <laughs> okay. It's crazy how, how like Chat GPT gets the, the 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 tone right of the characters and then you just kinda of like say, describe this. I even done Hank Hill and uh Homer Simpson, but let's go ahead and read this out. I am the architect of power. And velocity banking is but another tool of domination. Those who wield it shall ascend, while the weak remain bound by the chains of debt. The banks, mere pawns, believe they control you, yet their system is fragile, built on illusions of time and interest. With this strategy, you shall harness your income, bending credit to your will, obliterating the confines of a traditional mortgage. You will not merely pay your debts, you will erase them, leaving nothing in your wake. You will stand above the system, wielding a HELOC as a weapon, turning the very structure of finance against those who built it. For only the strong shall thrive. The weak will remain enslaved by debt, but you, you will be free. Right. And if you know about the character Apocalypse from X-Men, his thing is about that the strong shall survive. I'm really like amazed how ChatGPT gets like the tone right of certain, of many characters. I just type in like a random TV character 
and then like they get <laughs> it gets it pretty right. So all right, well, uh, let's go ahead and get started with our so-called daily ritual. So let me go ahead and go to the Excel sheet here. Now again, I'm just saying this in the tone of O.J. Simpson. So I don't know if you know that he wrote a book called If I Did It, right? If I Did It, Confessions of whatever this says. I don't want to say it. But <laughs> I don't know how you can write like a, a 288-page book and just like, you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe there's like a psychological thing where it's like if I did do it, here's my really lengthy 288-page book even though I didn't do it. And Maybe I'll just copy that from O.J. Simpson and say, listen – I'm not a cult leader, but if I were a cult leader, this is what I would tell you to do, and this would be your daily ritual, okay? Your daily ritual. And here's the thing. Right now, it's like 11.51 a.m., and I am so sleepy, so even the cult leader, this is how you know that this is a very like intense cult, because even the cult leader can't stand the sensory deprivation of doing Excel sheets at 11.51 a.m., but hey, it's okay because we got to do the daily ritual of Excel spreadsheets. You know what I'm saying? All right, so let's let's go ahead and get started with um, our daily ritual, which is just Excel spreadsheets. And uh, we're just going to do something a little bit different. This was kind of inspired uh, by um, a previous real-life case study. And Now, I don't really talk about short-term loans that much, but have you ever seen, like, those affinity loans it's like short term one like oh you know you check out and it's like you buy this you know it's like zero percent interest for however however many months and then like you know somehow they got to make money right well it turns out that for whatever i don't know how they advertise it and if it's you know maybe it's like a loophole but i've seen in real life people have like these short-term loans of like six months to a year and it's like 30 to 31 percent. It's insane, right? And so I've decided that in this scenario, we're going to go over velocity banking with these uh, short-term loans, and including a personal loan. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So what is velocity banking? All it is is a debt payoff strategy using your line of credit as your main operating account. So what is a line of credit? All it is is a financial tool where you could borrow money pay it back, and then use it over and over again, right? That's all, all a line of credit is. And so there are different types of lines of credit. I got all of them, right? I always like to brag, hey, I got I got all of them. You know, I, got, I have over $500,000 lines of credit. But luckily, you don't need a 500000 You know, you don't need like a $200,000 line of credit, although, you know, you always want more credit before you need it because there's a saying that banks don't lend money to people who need it. And all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we need is a budget, which we have. We have this budget right here, and we have our income and then our expenses and our leftover savings. And then when we do our expense breakdown, we have to list every single debt that we have, right? We have to list every single debt, and we got these debts right here, okay? And then um, the whole point of this is that when we eliminate debt, we get more cash flow, right? And then we're going to use our line of credit to help us increase our cash flow even on day one. So let me go ahead and copy some of this. So from here to here, right? And then we're going to assume two things, same income, zero savings. That's basically the opposite of what Dave Ramsey teaches you. And then you have income minus expenses. Uh, which will be our cash flow. Now, we haven't completed the final step yet because, again, people get tripped up by this and say, oh my goodness, savings and cash flow, same thing, what's the difference, right? Well, you got to move some debts to our line of credit, which is going to be our main operating account. And let's just assume that we have a, ooh, I did this before, okay? So, again, I always do the, quote, daily ritual, <laughs> which is why I always have leftover work scattered somewhere. But let's just assume we have a $50,000 home equity line of credit, and let's say it's, say, at 8.5%. Oh, we'll just say 9. It rounds. probably should be 8.5, but whatever. I'm going to get an 8.5 home equity line of credit that I'm going to close on soon. But, okay, so let me just say this. Um, it's kind of like a credit card. But even better in many ways because you can use it to pay anything. So like this $50,000 credit card that you can use to pay anything, 
right? But unlike a credit card, you can't use it for a student loan, auto loan, and all that. And that's why we have ultimate flexibility here, right? So if you have a higher interest rate loan or line of credit, and so if you've ever seen those short-term loans, they go as high as 30 and 31%, right? And some of these credit cards are like that too. So one of the big wins that we can have is that we move these high interest rate debts into that line of credit and we're definitely gonna increase our cash flow, okay? So let's go ahead and move all this in and let me go ahead and add it up just to make sure I got it correctly. So 1.4 plus uh, 0.8 plus 5 plus 8 plus 15 plus 24 plus, no, not 24. Everything except for the auto loan. So we're going to include everything that is higher than that 8% interest rate, um, or no, I'm sorry, 9% interest rate. So let me see if I got it correctly. 1.4, 8.8, 8, right? And then we got 5, 8, and 15. So how much is that? It's 30.2K. So that would be $30,200. I hope I'm getting this right, but because I'm in a sleep depri deprivation mode for this uh, so-called daily ritual. If I were a cult leader um, for this daily ritual, uh, it's probably why I'm not getting it right because I'm sleepy. So let's go ahead and one, now that, let's see if there's anything else I'm missing. Okay, I think we got it, all right? So now we've moved this debt into the line of credit and what happens by simply moving this debt into the line of credit? Well, guess what? These all go to zero right? Zero, 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 zero. So we move five debts into the line of credit. And look at that. We went from $1,000 of savings, which is pretty good by American standards because most Americans don't even have more than $400 in savings. Federal Reserve knows this. The system knows this, right? <laughs> and you all think that this, even though the system knows that you can't even get more than $400 in savings for an emergency, that they're going to forgive your student loans? Come on. All right. but So let me go ahead and do this. So two thousand dollars of cash flow and so the actual strategy is six thousand dollars into that line of credit which is going to do two things it's going to satisfy the minimum monthly payment and lower the interest and then you take your expenses out of that line of credit right and then it's after every single month it's good the balance is going to go down by about two grand plus some interest that we are going to pay for using that line of credit okay and we always calculate the interest separately all right because it's just a part of the balance and then so to calculate the next month's balance it's the previous month's balance plus the previous month's interest minus whatever the the cash flow number is two one four seven point nine nine all right so now um we're going to take the average daily balance right so just take the average and then multiply it by the interest rate which is 0 0.09 but remember this is annual interest right so we always have to divide by 12 to get the monthly interest because the interest is calculated after every single month and then we just copy and paste these formulas right and then we see that in month 14 this is all paid off right so a little bit more than a year well blam <laughs> right? it's my favorite word uh that did I copy that from somewhere? I don't know. Well, blam. I hope I didn't, but, you know, who's original these days, right? So 14 months, 14 months we paid off all of that 30 grand. 30 grand? Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. How did we get? Really? Did I? Did I? Oh, you know what? I screwed up. Okay. So I was like, wow, this seems a lot faster than I thought it would be. So I, I mixed up the four and the one. So 21147. So let's go ahead and correct that. And I was like, wow, this is really quick. And then I realized, oh, no, I, I screwed up. Okay. So now it's 15 months, which I think is just, is that one more month? I don't even know what's going on. All right. So now let's go ahead and do 15 months, right? So 15 months for... 30.2k so 30.2k and we paid off five debts okay in that fashion so that's awesome and so now what we're going to do is we're going to have to focus on the auto loan personal loan and mortgage and so we can find out the current balances after 15 months and luckily we got this loan calculator right here so the short-term loans have been paid off that 30 percent interest that's so insane right but that's that's uh, 
I mean, this was a real life case study, or not it, not these exact loans, but I didn't even know that they had these short term loans for thirty percent interest. That's insane. So this is now zero. This is now zero, and then now what we got to do is put fifteen months for all of these, and then you'll see that we have something called the CFI, which is the cash flow index. And what does a cash flow index mean? All it is is a formula of the balance, the balance divided by the minimum monthly payment. And so one of the reasons that, that you are gonna probably want to focus on these paying off these two loans first versus the mortgage is that hey, if I combine these two, that's like a almost like a little bit more than the mortgage payment, right? And it's not definitely not two hundred thousand dollars, it's about like thirty five thousand dollars, right? Thirty five thousand dollars to get about I don't know nine hundred fifty dollars of cash flow back I think, whereas if I pay off this two hundred thousand dollars two hundred four thousand dollars, I get eight hundred eighty five dollars of cash flow right. So we gotta think about this because again I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but usually anything below fifty is a good loan that we can pay off. So let's go ahead and move these loans into that line of credit right. So let's go ahead and whoopsie and add this up. So let me go ahead and add it to up these two numbers. Okay. So it's 35 grand. Okay. 35 grand. Let me go right here and copy and paste this. And then what we do is we add the 35 grand into the line of credit 35164.39. Okay. And by simply, again, we're not eliminating debt. We're just transferring it into that line of credit, guess what happens to these two payments, the auto loan and the personal loan? Wablam and wablam, right? Goes, we went from one now 1000 to $3,114.63. So let's go ahead and now update our cash flow. Okay, so our cash flow now is 3114.63. Okay, and so now what we do is just copy and then paste until this is all paid off. And then we see that in 26 months, these two loans are completely eliminated, right? So now we go back uh, up here, right? And then now at 26 months, it's 30.2 plus 24 plus 20. And now that's 74.2K. So 74.2K, these two loans have been eliminated, right? And now what we're going to do is eliminate the mortgage, right? So now let's take a look at what the uh, mortgage balance is. So I'm going to go back here to my calculator. Okay, so now these two are at zero, zero, zero. And then so now we're at 26 months, okay, 26, right? And we've paid off, and let me unzoom this a little bit. So 200,000 is the current balance and then we only shaved out $10,000 of the mortgage after 26 months. So a little bit after two years, we shaved off $10,000, but look at the interest we paid. So we paid a little bit more interest and this is a 3% mortgage. So with the 3% mortgage in the first year, you're paying a little bit more than half in interest whereas the principal is just kind of there, right? And the most important thing about this mortgage is that we need to attack it last, although we do need to attack it. Just make sure you don't attack it first, right? I ran a YouTube post like, do you attack the mortgage last or first? I think 30% of people wrote that you attack it first. So we got a little bit of review that we got to do. Again, AKA the daily ritual uh, that you got to practice. And so, Here's the thing, if we don't pay it off, right? So even though this sucks up such little payment compared to the balance, if we don't pay it off after 30 years, $108,000 we gotta pay in interest. Now, some people are like, hey, you know what? I could do better in the market. And the problem is, is that, listen, if you're so smart, why are you so broke right now? You know what I mean? Like just pay off your debt. <laughs> That's like paying off debt is guaranteed, whereas investing is not. You know what I'm saying? So like, don't come up with that snarky attitude. Like, well, yeah, it's only a three percent mortgage, but I can uh, I can do better in the market. And then it turns out you're broke, right? You you can only have that attitude once you got the track record 
and your mortgage is probably your only debt that you have and you're not living paycheck to paycheck, right? So let's go back here. So 26 months and then now we have a $200,000 balance and again, so here this cash flow index is way above 100. You look up the information or the info about the cash flow index, just put it on Google. Anything above 100, you don't you definitely kind of don't want to pay off early. That, that's how I interpret it, but you do want to pay off because we do end up paying interest. So the easiest way to pay this off is just by doing something called the chunking method, right? So you don't have to replace your mortgage, even though I've seen that on the internet. Every time I've done these calculations, mortgage replacement almost kind of ends up in a disaster because you're moving the entire 3% loan into like a 9 or 15% line of credit. And when you replace your mortgage, it's actually very sensitive to the interest rate, right? Whereas if you just do a little like this thing called chunking or chopping the loan up into pieces, into little chunks, then uh, surprisingly it's not. And I don't really have a quote scientific explanation for this because you'd think like it doesn't wouldn't make that big of a difference because you're still moving it to like a nine to fifteen percent home equity line of credit or line of credit in general, but it's 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 amazing. Even at thirty it's like not really that big of a deal. All right, so let's go ahead and just, you know, move how much income do we have right now? Six thousand dollars. So again, we just kind of move a small portion of the principal to the line of credit. And I think the rule of thumb is just move, like once you've maximized your cash flow, which is really more important, you just move like um, like amount similar to your paycheck. I think people get so hung up on this, to be honest, but it to me, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. But let's just move $6,000 into that line of credit from the mortgage, right? And then how long does it take us to pay that off? Or let's just do 10. Let's just do 10. Because we want to compare apples to kind of apples. I don't want to say it's exactly the same. But you see that in one, two, three months, we paid off $10,000 of the principal. Whereas here, if we just did it the, the good old-fashioned way that everybody else does it, and then you know once it like we can't handle our cash flow refinance, we basically pay this off in about, well, we, it took us 26 months to pay off 10 grand. You see that? Whereas if we just kind of did the ch this chunking method, um, we paid it off in about three three months. So that's the acceleration right there. We maximize our cash flow, and then we tack our mortgage last. Now, you might be saying, well, why don't we just directly put this um, cash flow into the loan? And the thing is, is that, hey, that's the default option. So why doesn't everybody do that? It's because people know that a loan is a one-way street. And once you put that money in, I mean, let me go, let's go ahead and say that I put this entire three thousand one hundred fourteen dollars into that loan. Am I ever going to get it back? Right. The answer is no. So, and because people have a need to feel like they need three to six months of savings, and they don't want to overpay the loan because again, it's a one way street, and they feel like they need access to emergency funds, um, <laughs> like they they don't they don't ever do it. Right. And then what happens is that because their income becomes segregated, which we haven't really covered in this meeting, um, this is why people refinance because they're looking for that monthly payment and then their paycheck has been split into too many places. And so they don't really um, end up knowing how to manage their cash flow. So hopefully that made sense. And if not, just kind of keep practicing that daily ritual of velocity banking over and over again. Now, the last step here. Okay, let me just tell you the last step is just filling this information in our Velocity Banking Calculator. Let's go ahead and open it up. Oh boy, I'm so sleepy. All right, so let's go ahead and go to, is this even the right window? Yes, it is. And here we have this Velocity Banking Calculator by Renatus. Now, if you didn't know, it's an educational company where I learned about Velocity Banking 2017. But not only do you learn about this, you learn about you know, financial literacy, real estate investing. That's why I learned how to buy properties at a discount, learn about Velocity Banking, learn about building wealth, blah, 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 blah. And so if you're interested, go ahead and click the Google Form link below. Um, so just full disclosure, I actually do make commission off of selling uh, their products as a independent contractor marketer. All right, so let's go ahead and fill in the dates or information. So what's the current balance and uh, 
wow, did I already fill this in? Maybe I probably did. <laughs> I've done this so many times, but I think, uh, take a look at this, 4.5 years. Oh my goodness, that was quick. So that's the beauty of having pre-filled out information, right? So 4.5 years, and look at this. The interest is only 14 grand. Now, here's the crazy thing, right? I know you've seen this on the internet about getting a first lien HELOC and replacing your mortgage. Let's say we did that. Well, blam, we're paying three times more in interest, right? So even though we technically saved 46 grand in this simulation, um, why throw money off the table? And this is 5.2 years, so you're throwing time away as well. And, you know, why not save 80 grand in interest? You know what I mean? Like, so why, why, why throw, throw away money? And if you're going to throw away money, just give it to me, right? Like, I'll... I'll I'll probably be really inefficient with it and actually be, you know, pretty bad. I don't know if you ever heard that if you ever give, like, people a lot of resources, they just end up wasting it. It's called Jevons Law. I don't know if you knew that. But, yes. So, 4.5 years, that's the whole point of this calculator. And also not to do a first lien HELOC. And then now we just go back to our other velocity banking sheet and then just figure out what the debt payoff is. So, let's go ahead and do that. And then so the, the total debt payoff is 26 divided by 12 plus 4.6, right? Is it 4.6? Uh, where'd I go? Where'd it go? No, 4.5, my bad. 4.5, all right? And so now it's, well, it's the same <laughs> number, 6.6 .6 years, right? And then now we are totally debt-free so this will be 284.2k, I hope, if I did it right. And well, blam, now we're good, right? We're, 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 so this one I got to update because I didn't up, add those two uh, high interest rate loans, 284.2. And um, yeah, so again, uh, if you want to master this, go ahead and create the spreadsheets yourself. I'm actually teaching people in real life, believe it or not how to do these Excel sheets with people who have never used Excel before. So um, I don't offer this like service in uh, online just because like I don't, you know, it's hard to kind of teach online whereas with your friend the computer, you know, there there's certain people out there who just like, they don't even know where the keys in the keyboard are even though they use a smartphone. It's really weird, right? <laughs> but yeah, so that's it for today again. So this is just your... Um, self-proclaimed velocity banking cult leader that's not really a cult leader because if I, I would only say this if i were but i'm not right and hopefully that doesn't confuse you but this is the daily ritual that i would i would tell you would set you financially free if i were a cult leader and i you'll notice that in every single thumbnail i always put like i'm the best leader because i am the best velocity banking cult leader if i were a cult leader all right, well, that's it for today's Korean Atlanta Mentorship. Have a great day. I'll speak next time.